Hi, my name is Drew Pemberton, and today I'm going to teach you how to use the infrared spectrophotometer, also known as the IR. The first thing we'll need to do in order to use the IR is to make a KBR pellet of our substance. Three, two, one. The first thing we'll need to do in order to make a KBR pellet is to weigh out approximately 100 to 200 milligrams of potassium bromide or KBR. The next thing we need to do now is to get out or weigh out about 2 to 3 milligrams of our substance that will be running through the IR. So in this case I'm running caffeine. Perfect. The next step we'll want to do is to take our weighed out KBR and stick it in a clean grinding dish. We will also add in our 2 to 3 milligrams of our substance. Now we take this little pestle and crush our KBR and our substance together in the mortar. We have to grind it into a nice fine powder or as fine as we're able to. So it started out as large crystals but you can kind of see that it's fairly fine now. Think of it closer to powdered sugar than salt crystals. Next, we want to put our ground up substance and KBR into, into whatever this thing's called, I can't remember what it's called, but you'll need all these different pieces here. So you first set down this part, then take this bigger part. There are two sides to this. There's a flat shinier edge and then there's a rough edge. You want the flat shiny edge facing upwards. And likewise with this other piece here there's a dull edge and a flat shiny edge. This is the dull side, this is the shiny side. We're going to scrape carefully our ground up powder into this press here. So we're going to put the shiny side down on top of that. Next, we take this and place it on top of this. And we carefully Slide it down, being sure to hold that long metal piece that we stuck in first. Carefully grab that by the bottom as you're scooting it out, like so. Now we're going to put it into the KBR press. So this is the KBR press. So you can see here that has some instructions on how to make a KBR pellet. So you're going to stick this bar handle into the slot here. When you're finished with this, this should always come out so that nobody walks up and stabs themselves on that. That would be unfortunate. So before we start pumping this up, we're going to place our our press pellet in there and so we do this in order to not only crush the crystals together to form one solid pellet uh, but we do a couple different steps in order to remove any H2O in the sample so get it up to four tons of pressure rapid drop then to six tons pressure and another rapid drop and nine tons pressure 
hold it for 30 seconds and then drop the pressure to zero. So in order to drop it, we just turn this knob here and that'll drop this whole assembly down. Okay, get four, press, four tons of pressure, drop, now to six tons of pressure. Rapid drop to zero. Now to nine tons. Wait for 30 seconds. All right, it's been about 30 seconds. Now we are ready to relieve the pressure and drop this down a bit. And out of courtesy, don't drop it down too far. Otherwise, it takes forever to pump this thing back up to a reasonable height. So we can take this off, invert it, pull off the top. I don't know if you can see that. There you go, pull off the top. And carefully take the top part off, this top part here. Now we can slide our pellet off. So here's what your pellet might look like. It's sort of clear, see through there, you can kind of see it. It's a little bit crumbly, and it's going to look different based on what your substance is. The substance here happens to be green, and you can kind of see the IR pellet right here. It's a a green color, green clear color. So now we are ready to run this through the IR. Now that we're at the IR, we can go ahead and load our pellet we just made into the IR. To do that, we have a small little plate here and a small magnetic piece with a hole in it. We're going to stick our pellet right into this hole here. There's a little bit of a lip here, so that'll hold the pellet in place and do it nice and careful just because the pellet is delicate so now we slide this on top of it carefully without breaking it open this up so I took the camera off the mount so you can see a little bit better where this is gonna go so we're going to place this in this part right here. So this is going to go right on in there. And can you see that red laser, how it's now hitting the pellet? That is what, how we want it to be. Now the sample is loaded and we're ready to go ahead and run the IR. So now that we have our KBR pellet made and we've placed it into the IR, now we can go ahead and run the experiment. So to do that, we want to open up Omnic. You'll see a window that says Smart Accessory Change pop up, and you just got to hit OK. So now we are ready to collect our data. To do that, we go up to the top to the Collect tab, and then click the Collect Sample option there. So you'll see a little window here that says, please prepare to collect the sample spectrum. Hit OK. And then the software will go ahead and start collecting data from the experiment. Once you have the data collected, it'll ask you to name your spectrum. So in this case, we'll just call it caffeine. IR sample, since that is what we ran. After we hit OK, we'll get a window that says confirmation. Data collection has stopped. There were spectral quality errors. Add to window one. You can hit yes. So now that we've done that, uh, what we need to do now is go up to process and go up to automatic baseline correct and hit that. You'll now have two spectra on the window and it's the one that is highlighted in red and 
has a star up by the name, that is the one, or that's the new one. That's the one we just did the automatic baseline correct to. So next, what we'll need to do is change it from absorbance. You can see on the y-axis it says absorbance, and we want to change that to percent transmittance. So before we do that, though, let's go ahead and get rid of this other uh, sample spectra. So go ahead and just click on that blue looking one and now you'll be on that and that blue looking spectra is now red and the other one is now green. Go up at the top to edit and cut to get rid of the old spectra, the one that hadn't had its baseline corrected. Now that we've gotten rid of that uh, old spectra now we can turn this one into percent transmittance by going up at the top to the process tab and go to percent transmittance and click that and this is what your spectra will look like after you've adjusted for the percent transmittance so all of the different peaks here correspond to different functional groups within the molecule now if you're in the forensics class and you're wanting to go ahead and look up whatever compound it is you have all you have to do is go to analyze and then you go to search the library that uh, this Omnic program has access to will try and match the spectra to the closest thing possible so in this case we get this where the software is showing us Yes, it found a match that this is caffeine in KBR, and the best match is excellent. If you were to go to Library Setup under the Analyze tab at the top, you could choose different libraries to try and search from. For example, they have the Normal Solid and Liquid IR library. So this is just a library that some outside people have compiled together to help people identify uh, what their substance is. And so we could choose to search in that or to search through other libraries for a possible match from our sample IR. If you need to save your spectra, all you have to do is go up to File and then Save and you can choose where to save it and choose what to name it. So in this case we'll call it caffeine IR sample like we had before. So if you want to print out your sample spectra all you have to do is go on up to the top to file and then to print and print it out to the HP printer that is shown there connected to it and that's all there is to it. Once you're finished running an IR spectra, be sure to take out the KBR pellet from the machine and dispose of it in the proper waste container so that the next person can use the IR.